How did we get to this? A Native American with Stone Edge weapons fighting a Chinese Imperial soldier in the American Old West. This event probably never really happened, but what kind of history led to this idea? That scene is from Shanghai Noon, a 2000 film starring Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson. The movie follows the adventures of two men from two different countries who team up in the Old West of the United States to fight bad guys and rescue a princess. As an amateur historian and Hollywood outsider, I believe there's a rich film history that led to Shanghai Noon. Let's take a look. If you're a fan of old school adventure films, you may know of the connection between Japanese samurai movies and American Westerns. Both types of films tend to feature brave heroes fighting in rustic areas of their home countries, where people struggle to survive in a land of violence and lawlessness. In fact, there have been many retellings between the two genres. The first and most famous reimagining was when the Japanese film Seven Samurai was remade into The Magnificent Seven, which of course got its own remake in 2016. Another example is Yojimbo, translated as The Bodyguard, remade into a spaghetti western starring Clint Eastwood. So far, both of the Japanese films were directed by the great Akira Kurosawa and starred Toshiro Mifune. There are other examples, but let's jump to a reverse of the above trend. The 1992 film Unforgiven is a western starring Clint Eastwood and was reimagined into the 2013 film starring Ken Watanabe. And while we're drawing all these comparisons, yes, I'm going to count The Mandalorian as a Western. Samurai films and Westerns were finally blended together in the film Red Sun, starring Charles Bronson and Toshiro Mifune. The last film completes an interesting overlap between the Japanese director and two of the actors. Meanwhile, the great martial artist and actor Bruce Lee gained success in the American television series, The Green Hornet, plus the Hong Kong action films that followed. Around the same time, Bruce pitched the idea for a television show about a Chinese martial artist who travels through the 19th century Western United States. The series later aired starring David Carradine as a half Asian Shaolin monk. So finally, we arrive at a mashup between Red Sun and the TV series Kung Fu. Shanghai Noon contains strong elements from both of its inspirations. For example, both Kung Fu and Shanghai Noon show the historical labor and mistreatment of Chinese laborers who helped build the American railroads, which is important history to remember. So now we know there were Chinese immigrants in the American Old West, there may have been a few Buddhist monks among them. But what about samurai? Did Japanese warriors with two swords wander among America's cowboys and cattle ranchers? Unfortunately, I did not find any historical records of samurai getting into trouble in the wild, wild west. There were, however, a few visitors from Japan to the United States in the 19th century. In 1841, a small group of teenage Japanese fishermen were rescued from their wrecked boat by an American whaling ship. The ship ended up taking them to Hawaii, and then one of them, named Nakahama Manjiro, to the mainland United States. After years of traveling and working on whaling ships, he returned to Japan and was promoted to samurai in 1853. Thank you to the YouTube channel Voices of the Past for that information. Link in the description below. Later, in 1859, the Tokugawa shogunate sent the first diplomatic mission to the United States. Fukuzawa Yukichi volunteered his services, and they arrived in San Francisco, California, in 1860. The delegation stayed in the city for a month, during which time Fukuzawa had himself photographed with an American girl, and also found a Webster's Dictionary, from which he began serious study of the English language. This delegation also included Nakahama Manjiro, the fisherman who had been rescued and brought to the United States almost 20 years earlier, 
and was now a samurai back home in Japan. The diplomatic mission continued to Panama, then proceeded north to Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and New York City, where the procession up Broadway from the Battery was a grand parade. The parade was immortalized in Walt Whitman's poem, A Broadway Pageant. The poem begins, Over the western sea, hither from Niphon come, courteous, the swart-checked two-sworded envoys, leaning back in their open barouches, bareheaded, impassive, ride today through Manhattan. So that's as close as I found for a samurai in the Old West. It is an interesting enough idea, though, to have inspired the 1971 film. Which, I propose, was remade into a Jackie Chan action film. Hard to believe? Let's step quickly through the scenes from the two movies. Spoilers ahead! The American chapter of both films begins with a sweeping landscape shot, followed by a train with some introductory text. The American lead watches the train, and we are introduced to the Japanese samurai warrior and the Chinese imperial soldier. The American leads a train robbery, and a precious item is stolen. For Red Sun, a stolen sword directly ties the American and Japanese leads. For Shanghai Noon, it's a side plot about a kidnapped princess. The American is betrayed by his own criminal gang. Then the American and the Asian have an awkward meeting where they decide to team up. Wait, not this awkward meeting. Not this awkward meeting. Not this awkward meeting. There, that's the one. Despite deciding to work together, they have a physical altercation. This is where Charles Bronson learns about Tashira Mifune's swordsmanship and judo. But let's be honest, Owen Wilson doesn't even try to take on Jackie Chan. Still trying to resolve their differences, Bronson's character leaps off a rock and pulls the samurai into a river. Just like Jackie Chan's character pulled down a crow horseman earlier in Shanghai Noon. They finally settle their differences and ride into town together. They have a drink. They take a bath, or at least one of them does. And the samurai takes an American girl to bed, similar to how the Chinese soldier went to bed with the daughter of a Sioux chief. The story goes on and they finally arrive at an old mission for a prearranged meeting with the bad guys. There's an ambush and a confrontation. Then the Native Americans arrive. In the 1971 film, they are Comanche warriors who serve as the nameless bad guys for lots of fighting to come. In the 2000 film, the Sioux warriors arrive to save the heroes from the bad guys. I believe the difference in these approaches is from the cultural climate when the films were made, not with the tribes themselves. And that's where we get to a Comanche warrior fighting a Japanese samurai with traditional weapons, similar to how Crow warriors fought a Chinese imperial soldier in Shanghai Noon. After all conflicts are resolved, the precious item is returned to its rightful owner, or instead she gets to decide where she wants to go. And the heroes ride off to the horizon. And that, my friends, is how I believe we got to here. Both movies are a lot of fun, but before you find a copy of Red Sun to show the family, be warned, it's not a kid's movie. Ursula Andress shows enough skin for an R rating. Plus there are plenty of deaths by bullets, arrows, spears, and of course a samurai sword. But both movies are still definitely worth a watch. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of films, books, and websites referenced in this video.